Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Heart to Heart with Ethel Lakoshta. This is such a pleasure for me to have you all here coming uh, together every Sunday at a particular time to kind of share stories, you know, that go across uh, India and Malaysia, stories that uh, that matter to us, stories of you know of people, of professionals who champion their causes, uh, who champion their work and their professions. And it's great for me to kind of to curate this, the you know the topics, curate the professionals who I want I would like to talk to. It's what I call visual journalism, because um, it is journalism, you know, where we uh, discuss matters of the heart and uh, discuss matters of our work and our life and how it affects us uh, as an industry, as professionals, as individuals. So, welcome to another uh, episode of Heart to Heart with Ethel Dakosha. It is uh, an FB live that happens every Sunday. Uh, Heart to Heart is my leadership soul series with empowered individuals from around the globe who live their life with truth and integrity. Heart to Heart is brought to you in association with the MAC Clinic, Malaysia's premier and pioneering uh, aesthetic institution. Uh, we, we believe in, in a common cause and a common value you know, of quality, and that's why. Uh, it's a great partnership, uh, you know, between uh, um, me as um, Think Geek Media and the Back Clinic. So thank you, Dr. Hugh, uh, for the for the belief. Today we have a very sensitive topic and a very critical topic uh, that is crucial uh, to our industry, uh, Malaysia uh, in particular, India in particular, and the world in general. What we want to discuss today is the future of the FMB industry in the face of the pandemic. Uh, we all know, you know, the harsh reality that uh, lives have changed. You know, FMB outlets are struggling. Some have shut down. Major, you know, uh, FMB brands, uh, you know, hotels and chains are, have shut down because it's all, you know, kind of, you know, some of them have been raised to the dust, so to say. And therefore, it becomes very critical and integral for us to discuss, you know, what is going to happen to the professionals who have, you know, who have made an entire career an entire life around this industry, uh, and uh, how are they coping? Uh, what are their struggles? What is the struggle of the professionals, you know, and the talent who built uh, a life, you know, like a strong fifteen-year-old or a ten-year-old, twenty-year-old career, uh, you know, in, in the in the FMB industry? What are they doing? You know, where is the momentum? Uh, the current momentum now. What is the future? That is what we're going to discuss. And to discuss that, I had to have A.D. Singh from India on board. Because um, as we all know, A.D. Singh is a very popular, very well-known uh, you know, F&B industry leader in India. You, you can't have a conversation you know, uh, uh, around F&B without A.D. being mentioned uh, you know, as such an integral uh, person you know, in, the, in the development of what, uh, the kind of work that is done in India. So A.D. Singh is the founder and managing director of the Olive Group of, uh, of Restaurants in India, a very well-known figure in the restaurant business. A.D. Singh has been at the forefront of the Indian hospitality industry for the last 28 years. Since 1990, he has encouraged the growth of, of the standalone restaurant concept in India, giving it direction, confidence, leadership, and definition. A huge pleasure for me and a great honor to have A.D. Singh online with us, and he's just going to join us right now. A.D., welcome. Hey, everybody. Thank you, Ethel. Thank you for those kind words. Welcome and a great good evening to you from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Huge pleasure to have you here, really, and, a, and an honor, as I said. Thank you. My pleasure. Wait, so what's the weather in Delhi right now? Because it's raining cats and dogs and buckets in Kuala Lumpur. I think you don't know what rain is unless you're in India during monsoons. And I'm actually in Bombay right now. I was in Delhi when we spoke, but I'm back here. I shuttled okay. between the two cities and it's pouring here as well. But wow. I love it. So it's fine. Yeah, monsoon, monsoon is so romantic. I love the monsoons too. Correct. So, so Adi, um, let's just uh, you know get into the conversation, as we have friends from India, uh, uh, Bangladesh even, uh, and Malaysia joining us. I can see you know all of them popping into the chat box. Uh, what is the current state of the of the uh, 
F and B industry in India, AD. So I don't know exactly the details in Malaysia. In India, we've been shut for nine of the last seventeen months, completely shut, all mm-hmm. our restaurants. And even when open, there have been a lot of challenges. We can function most months at fifty percent capacity. Uh, we're not allowed bar nights. We're not allowed parties. Um, the um, uh, the timings are reduced. For the longest time, my show was till four o'clock. It's just gone to ten o'clock. But okay. a lot of my restaurants, which are about dinner in the evenings, we do seventy percent of our business in the evening. So it's very tough with these timing mm-hmm. restrictions. And my sector estimates that by the end of the second lockdown. As we're all trying to get back on our feet, probably as much as 25 to 30 percent of restaurants in this country will not be able to manage to reopen and survive. 25, 30 percent. Wow, that's very. Yes, that sounds dreadful, uh, you know, Ad. Because uh, I mean, we we had a whole, you know, kind of culture all around it, right? Friends and you know, all our events and. Uh, all our um, lifestyle journalism was all built around it, right? Uh, you know, I kind of look at it as um, wow. So many of them, you know, uh, without jobs, without not knowing what to do. Uh, a lot of them in you know in, in in the prime of their lives, right? You know, in their late forties and late fifties, right? I mean, uh, and we're pushing them now into either early retirement or you know, I, I really feel sad about it. I really feel sad about. You know, so the two sides to that, effort. and I think what is very well what you said, and I got to admit on this call that about a year ago, last summer of 2020, I myself, as most of us, had no idea what was going to be the situation right. after, you know, the the first wave slowed down and the lockdowns lifted. Would people go out at all? Would they come back to restaurants? Would the numbers be 10 percent? If you said, mm. oh, I really didn't know if this company that I've lovingly nurtured and this industry that I've supported for so many years would ever be back. And it was very encouraging for us to see on the wider platform across India. Last year, post the lockdown, we had six months left in the year. People were coming out in larger and larger numbers. They were yes. almost back to yes. what it was in the old days very quickly. And it's been very encouraging for the second wave that they're coming back in even better numbers. Mm. So it's given me confidence and a clarity. Actually, I feel that even more than a culture, I think going out, eating out, meeting family, friends, it's a very critical part of the fabric, the very fabric of everybody's lives. You know, we all know that work's not easy. Work's not easy. You go through tough times, and the balance that the F and B industry I think gives. The little breaks in the evenings, going out, catching up, uh, really helps us balance our lives and get on with it. Mm. And I, I think has given a lot of encouragement and confidence to the sector in our country that we will survive. Yes. On 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 that note, I must introduce our next, uh, you know, our guest uh, along uh, with Fatua today. Uh, because I'm sure he shares, you know, the same sentiments as you. Because uh, uh, Leslie Gomez uh, uh, has been in the industry for the last, uh, you know, 17 years. He has built such a strong um, environment of, uh, of, uh, you know, solid brands. Uh, you know, a, a great personality known in Malaysia. So it is my great pleasure to also invite and have on my heart to heart today, uh, Mr. Leslie Gomez. Founder and Managing Director of the Olive Tree Group in Malaysia, a dynamic organization specializing in the development of exceptional fine dining experiences in Malaysia for the last 17 years. Uh, under, uh, under his establishment, uh, you know, he has outlets in Kuala Lumpur, Genting Highlands, Johor, Malacca, and Penang. Under Leslie's helm and leadership, the outlets have now become recognized as one of the most prominent fine dining rendezvous for unparalleled gastronomical experiences. You know, most of his brands have all been award-winning brands. So let's have Leslie online with us. Hi, Leslie, and welcome to Heart to Heart. Hi, hi, hi. Yes. Hi, hi. Uh, 
Leslie, today's topic is so important to all of us and to all our friends who are joining us from different parts, you know, of Malaysia, India, and Bangladesh, because they're all associated with the F&B industry in some way or the other. Um, you have been, you're such a well-recognized, you know, um, professional uh, in Malaysia with so many brands that you, you know, manage, uh, you know, own. And you employ so many, you know, I think over over 400 employees uh, in your past, in the entire, you know, career. Um, what, how, what is your, what is the current state of the FMB industry in Malaysia, Leslie? Uh, well, uh, the way, the way, the way things are here at the moment, actually, uh, and the way the things were in, in 2019, yeah, I think everything was fine, great. But I think 2020 was, uh, during the first phase when it closed down for the first MCO and then like, like Mr. Eddie was saying, you know, there was no uh, no way of looking what's going to happen tomorrow. We never knew what it, what it was, actually. You know? I think the first time right. period, we were close to about 58 days. Yeah, so I think the first the first few days was fine. We were getting we were also interested to find what's going to happen and all that. I think more with the progress time period, actually, you know, it started to settle into being that, you know, uh, there was no, no way to look at what's tomorrow all about, actually, you know? you know, everything was fine. You have a big organization. You have so many workers along with you. Um, I guess, yeah, the uh, fundamentals were there. The organization uh, was strong enough for, to hold on for the first MCO. It was fine. But then uh, as as time uh, grew and we reopened back again and then fell into all the categories of uh, when Dynan opened back again, Yes. Uh, a table for two, a meter distance, and all this, and then you're running on a 50% capacity to what it was, actually. Yeah? Um, mm -hmm. Where the source of income, you know, you, because we run kitchen and bar concepts, actually, you know, and you're looking at, at the after work crowd and uh, the weekends, especially, and when you're running on 50% capacity, uh, you, you want to see numbers. You know, and you, know, you, yes. you come from where you have seen it, and you, you, you start to settle down and tell yourself that it is not. The way it is going to be, actually, you know? and then yeah. we came back. In, uh, we came back. Uh, I think we rebounded back in Malaysia in, in early July, August. People started to accept the numbers were very low. Um, we actually dropped for about for at least for a month uh, with um, single digits, actually. And then after mm -hmm. a sudden in September again, the second wave happened, and it took yeah. us way until December. You know, you see numbers coming to about five thousand a day. I think um, the government was skeptical about it uh, until the new year. And then exactly, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's January 8th, we closed to a se second MCO actually. And that was a month. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, yeah, and then I, we got, I, I think apparently I got used to, uh, to know what's going to happen. And we started to right. replan back. We knew exactly that this is the course of how is it doing. But uh, generally, the numbers dropped. Back and again, we open back in a month actually. Correct. In fact, yeah. Leslie, uh, Leslie uh, uh, on this exact date last year in 2020, I was yeah. at Frangipani doing a food review okay. and it was full and it was buzzing with people yeah. and music yeah. and stuff like that, right? Yeah, yeah. so a huge uh, difference. People, we, we, uh, we saw a very good uh, three months after that. We opened back in February, March, April, until May. Yes. And we saw the numbers coming back and now we closed back, we, we closed in on May 7th, and we just Correct. opened up now. We're still under phase one year. Some yes. places have opened up to phase two and phase three, but um, um, thanks to the almighty, I think uh, at least he heard some prayers of us, actually, you know, we were, we are actually submerged <laughs> for the last three, three and a half months, actually, you know, the, uh, the industry is, if we, if we need people, you know, if they always yeah. say, I'll, I'll yeah. got to stay for a rainy day, actually, this is not a rainy day. It's uh, it's an it's a storm which we don't know when and yeah. when it's in and when it's off actually you know and even now you know the numbers are high we are running about nineteen thousand a day actually you know but uh, touch wood at least category one and category two is the main um, figures at least about three and four five the numbers are very low mm. but yes um, people are coming out people are very skeptical people mm. are not very confident we need to build that confidence with them actually uh, you know Correct. that. You know, the one industry which gets affected is the dino, is the F and B industry. You know, Absolutely. every single time it's okay. Anything goes wrong and you're closed again. You know, so yes. now we are back to we are back to where we are actually. But there's a lot of protocols, uh, mm. table testing, number of capacity in the outlet. So we go back to square one again. Actually, uh, 
I think the whole industry, I don't want to speak for the whole industry, but I could, I could uh, speak for myself as an organization, you know. We had yes. been to, uh, um, we've been to a very, um, a period which we didn't want to be in actually. You know, we, we, are run, we were running into a, a system where we never knew how long the space would be actually, because when we closed, it was, when we closed down, it uh, closed in May, it was about 3,000 cases. And mm -hmm. today, 3,000 cases, and you do not know, and the government said phase one, phase two, phase three, you see? Yes, so, yes. Um, the industry, they, we, we are hungry, we are hungry when we want to get back into business, actually. You know, we All want right. people to come back, we want people to be confident. They need to believe in you, they need to believe in your brand, actually. That's the most important thing, yeah. yeah. Right. So, Leslie, uh, uh, have any of your outlets been forced to shut down, uh, you know, hit by the pandemic? Yeah, we have. Uh, uh, the, uh, we, uh, because uh, the way I started off previously was because we, uh, we were closely tied up with the tourism industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, uh, the main our uh, main business, core business was tourism actually. Yeah, uh, yes. tourism from India, mm -hmm. from uh, from uh, from Europe, uh, from the middle um, uh, Middle East. So one of my outlets, one of the biggest outlets, the 400 seat outlet actually, we actually had to, had to shut down. Okay. And we did that. We did we did that. We closed down in March because there was no tourism happening and there's no people coming around. And when you sit in exactly in a in a place where you need uh, mm -hmm. you need. To, Actually, which is not, which compress about ninety five percent of them. Yes. We were not able to sustain that. But touch wood, the uh, the other seventeen outlets are opened. Yeah, so okay. uh, that's good because we diversified. We changed a little bit here and there, and yeah, yeah, we are yet, yeah, yet to open up Reinvent. two more. Reinvent, yes. right on your yeah, feet. Yeah, that's, that's the most the thing. I think we need to get you get in the flow. What's happening and think you have to change your mindset exactly. Actually. Yes, Adi, what about you? Were you forced to uh, to kind of shut down any of your establishments in India? Yeah, so our group uh, visited about 27 restaurants before mm -hmm. um, the pandemic struck. We're now at about 25. Okay. And I think we probably have to close with two more. All right. Uh, because, uh, I guess we can't work out the right way with the landlords and malls. Malls are struggling a lot in, in India. How are you coping, AD? How are you coping with all this? On a wing and a prayer, I'm... This is Leslie, it's fascinating. I think all of us, our stories are the same. And we're yeah. doing our best and, you know, hoping for, hoping for this, for this pandemic to become a way of life, like the common cold flu is, so that yes. then we can all go back to sort of normalcy and get back on our feet. Correct. How have you think, you know, uh, you know, Adi, because, I, because you're in India, right? Uh, and uh, I've been now in Malaysia for almost 16 months. Uh, has the has the FMB industry in India seen any kind of support from the government? You know, in what way, if yes, and uh, you know, how how is the entire environment, you know, so to say, from from the authority point of view, in terms of stepping up to support such a huge big, you know, uh, face of, of the country, right? Thank you for asking. It's a really um, uh, it's the biggest um, one of the biggest. Um, challenges, frustrations for me personally, for the industry as well. You see, where I come from, I think the FMB industry in India gives, uh, is probably the second highest employer in this country directly. And indirectly through our vendors, etc., it's we think it's about two to three times more. And each one of these one of them, people who rely on us are often carrying their own family. So mm. our need, our support, our value to the economy, just on the job side, number one, is huge. Secondly, the sort of taxes, revenues, fees we pay the government are very high. And uh, that's also great value, you know, of course, for the government. And thirdly, even more importantly, as I was mentioning earlier, mm. the rule of way in keeping the citizens of our country happy and comfortable and being able to get on with life is critical. And Correct. Or for any government, I mean, they basically in the end want their citizens to be happy with their lives. We are very, it's very important to provide that. And we don't do that with any of the government paying us for it. We, in fact, pay the government to be able to do that. So mm -hmm. I would really like to see East India, let's get it out in Malaysia, but I'd love to see the industry here being recognized much more, being respected much more, being valued. 
Yes. We find that sometimes the government needs to frame policies or react to situations. The perception of our industry is unfortunately very confusing, very negative. They think we're leaders, they think we don't declare our numbers. Both were true at one time long ago, not true anymore. Mm -hmm. We start to suffer and struggle, you know, on a continuous basis. Mm -hmm. That needs to change. Okay. Okay. Wow. Wow. Leslie, what about you? Uh, you know, what kind of, you know, um, uh, you know, what kind of feedback can you give us in terms of the support that you feel, you know, is, is required or happening, currently happening to the industry in Malaysia? I guess, um, I think every, every country has this way of looking at it, actually. Yeah. Um, but I'm quite faithful, um, I'm thankful that um, the government, yes, they have supported us in, in in coming up with certain uh, structural things for the companies, for the uh, for the SMEs, basically. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Loans being waived off. There's some uh, soft loans being given uh, to SMEs, driving SMEs, to drive the economy, basically. Um, at the end of the day, but if you know whatever said and done, I, I never believed in um, in loans until until last year. Uh, until last year, actually, you know, when you really need something, you have to go for it. Actually, by the end of the day, you still need to pay. It. You know, it's not a waiver for you, actually. You know? But uh, yeah, the government has been supportive, uh, but um, everyone has a different perspective of asking for things, uh, different perspective of looking at things. Uh, but also, it also it also gives you a sense of where um, what have you been doing for the last 17 years, and how how how, how firm an, uh, an organization you are in in, in, in mm. the country itself. You know, people look up to you. You've been yes. there for 17 years. You've got about 18 outlets around, and uh, and I think the most fundamental thing is uh, is also how the organization has has been run. You know, and, um, mm. we we uh, I always believe that we need to be firm enough to hold on to actually. You know? but, but certain things is not in our hands actually. You know, when you have almost about 300 employees uh, working for you in a company, um, of the main problems uh, which you face, I think it's the same, the same goes to Sadi also. You know, rental salaries. Utilities, you know, all, um, and then you have foreign foreign employees working for you. You have right. stuff like basically uh, staff houses, uh, staff food, all these kind of things. You, know, you can't cut off just because you're closed. You you yes. still need to provide, you know, because at the end of the day, they, they believe in you, you know, and, and I think you're the backbone of it. So, mm. after uh, touch wood by God's grace, I think even in this um, the lowest period of time we've been here, the last three months actually, we're still. Elder Ed's eye, but we have uh, gone. Uh, I, I think I've learned a lot actually in this last um, um, 90 plus days or 100, day, 100 days uh, to, know, to really know. They always say cash is king, actually, you know. Yes, uh, if, yeah. you have more, uh, if you have the money, everything is there. But you know, this kind of an industry, um, um, it's called a cycle. You keep on cycling, it, it comes yes. in, it goes out. You want, you want to grow, you want to build in new things, you want people. You know, so it's a cycle. So when the cycle breaks, you know, it, everyone gets affected. Mm. But um, I think uh, what keeps you going is uh, to keep a positive attitude, a positive mindset, telling yourself that you can do it. Actually, you know, you need to change yourself according to the time. And I always tell myself this: uh, nothing is permanent in life. You know, Correct. today you were there, and tomorrow is nothing is there. Actually, so you know, change is uh, yes. change is the only constant. Yeah, it's so you've got, got to adapt to it. You've got to adapt to it. You know, yes. today we open it. Tomorrow maybe again close again. Actually, you know. So, and you have people who believe in you. You know, people mm -hmm. who come with you. You've got people who are working in your company. You can't just tell, okay, we're closed and done and it's finished. Actually, you know, you've got to hold on to every single thing. Uh, and uh, I think the government also has been listening. I think um, the FMB sector gives in so much GDP to the government. Actually, you know, yes. Uh, yes, the biggest, the biggest um, thing. So. Uh, I think as an economy, you don't want to break it. Also, you want you want to start. You have to start somewhere. You know, you mm -hmm. can't tell yourself that you. I think, as I said, it's going to be the new norm. Actually, you got to you got to adapt it. You got yes. to be responsible. You got to tell yourself, I have to wash my hands twenty times a day. You got to do it. You got to you you got to sanitize. You got to wear your mask and move around. I think that's a new way of life. I think how long you're going to tell yourself you're going to sit back, and how long is the government going to help you too? It's Correct. not going to. Happen. One yeah. month, two months, three months, four months, maybe the max, and then everyone needs to move on. And I think we have to start moving on, actually. Like uh, uh, the health minister said the other day, um, probably Malaysia will move into an endemic in October, you know, mm -hmm. like similar to what Singapore has done, actually, you know. Yes. I think, yeah, the herd community, 85% when they are double vaccinated, 
Correct. Everyone will start to come out. You know, you can't yes. hold on. I think people today will not die of COVID. People will die of depression soon, actually. You know, it yeah. it's you there. It hits you there when you're locked up in your own house and you're not able to do things. You know, you're in a mm -hmm. business. You and and uh, when you are in this kind of business, you, you see people every day. And when you go to your house and everything is shut, it depresses yeah. you badly. Actually, you know, I think we have to sit down, think about it, and move on. Okay. I have so many interesting questions about the new norm coming up, but in the meantime, if I may add to what uh, Leslie said, so you were saying something, right? No, I was saying I have some interesting questions coming up about the new norm uh, moving forward from here. But in the meantime, we have you know, I'm, uh, we have uh, our friends who are online sending us greetings and stuff like that. So I'm just going to you know put them also. So Faisal from uh, from Bangladesh has uh, you know says hello. He has a lot of questions. Faisal from Bangladesh has a lot of questions that he sent to us, which I will also address you with. So, hi, Faisal. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Puvan from Malaysia says, hi, Leslie. Puvan here from Asian Seasons Travel. I believe uh, he knows you. Yes. Um, he says, uh, Leslie owns part of Changat. Oh, yes, he does. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, Puvan, for, for, you know, for being online with us. Uh, much more interesting questions that are up. So, since you're talking about the new norm, you know, and uh, I can see that from the India perspective also happening. I can see that from the Malaysia perspective also happening. Uh, let's discuss this new phenomena that has be that has become an offshoot, or you know, or uh, if that's the right word, that has suddenly kind of you know springboarded as a consequence of the pandemic, uh, which is as I said, it's a new phenomena of home chefs, home deliveries, social distancing. Is that the new norm? And do you see that as a boon or a bane to the f and industry? So for me, it's a... Um, yes, Adi, let's hear you. Sure. Yes, I, I, again, I think uh, our experiences are very similar. There's been a huge explosion of home chefs, especially home bakers, which is quite a yes. customer. Um, do I, you know, I feel that we've customize the option in the dining at home, mm. either to get delivery from one of our restaurants or to get from a home chef. It's not the same segment as the dining in business, which is what the other group is, is mainly in. Yes. Uh, but it's part of the delivery game. Uh, I'm a, I, as a customer and as a new market coming out, I think that's fabulous. However, in India, at least, to date, it's largely unlicensed, no mm. taxes paid, mm. and that puts the whole uh, segment on a different footing, which is not fair to those who are paying their taxes, who are licensed, observing hygiene protocols, etc. So yeah. yeah, as a yeah. segment, it must come under the same rules and safety standards, etc. But I think it's lovely that it's going so well. Uh, what do you have to say, Leslie, to this entire new phenomenon? Uh, well, um, everyone has become chefs, everyone has become uh, doctors, and everyone has become uh, everything, whatever you say, you know, because you sit in the house and you want to, you want to experiment, you see. But I, 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 I feel, I, I think I've seen that, actually. Like now, uh, you can see all the delivery platforms, everyone is packed. You can see that um, home cooked food delivered and picked up, you know. You know it's it's mm. become so competitive. It's it's not about the branding anymore, actually. It's mm. about the quality and the pricing exactly to it, actually. You, know? you can yes. have the brand, you know? and and this people, the spending power at this time, you know, it's it's totally different. You know, they 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 always look for that. Um, I, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't call it cheap. They would look for that quality, but the pricing to be very uh, limited, you know, and, into, mm. a, into a range. You do not want to compete with a big brand. They want to sell the same item, but the branding is different. It's like something similar to whatever yes. you got there. but. Yeah, right. but I, I believe that um, it's like a sugar rush suddenly, right? When you open up and you see everyone coming out and, oh, and, everyone, <laughs> and, everyone, and everyone starts to see that the, uh, the delivery platform's dropping by 30, 40% actually, you know? So yes. um, I, I always believe people will want to come out. People will want to come out to, uh, to dine in, to go out, to have some fun. I think that's when the, uh, the brands speak for themselves, actually, you know, because you have your regular, the regular clientele around you, actually. Uh, people mm -hmm. who you know, people trust, who people trust in you, actually. You know, so I think it's it's everything. Everything is uh, everything is there for a time limit, actually. You know, because right. I don't get this, I get this. You know, it's option yes. A, B, C left on the table. 
But yes. yeah, exactly. But the new norm, it's going to be the same. You know, masks on, sanitization, uh, right. social distancing, and and I think when people uh, are ready for it and they accepted it, I think everyone's going to just move on with it. You know, it's yeah, it's, right. it's I think it's it's become it's become a very uh, a mental block inside. You know, everything yeah. is due to COVID. You have a slight flu, it's COVID. Correct. You have a slight fever, it's COVID. Yeah? yeah, everything I don't understand. We all we had this a long time ago, running noses and all that, you know. But no, it's just the mental block inside. I think we need to get that out, you know. Until not then, only that, not only that, Leslie, you sneeze and everyone runs. <laughs> no one says bless you. Everyone says curse you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so, yeah. You, everyone oh, runs around, you know. Yeah, eighty. Uh, do you do you see this uh, eating into the uh, FMB industry segment as like you know uh, in terms of you know uh, in, to, in terms of the business share market share? What's happening in India is that uh, in the last few years, five, six years, seven years, huge new numbers have have entered the consumer market in our country hmm. because of growing wealth. At uh, tier two, tier three, I'm in the metros, different price points, youngsters, etc. So yes. that's been very encouraging for us. Of course, as this new market suddenly grew so strongly, they were still new. So they wanted basic things, they were comfortable with low price mm. points. Mm. But in the last few years, this huge new market has become more sophisticated. They want better, not all of them, but a sizable chunk of it. And therefore, for groups, restaurants like myself, uh, the market's much bigger, better, more adventurous, more curious than ever before. And there's more than enough space for home chefs. Uh, there's more than enough space for people getting good delivery at home. Because yes. the dining in itself is growing uh, very well. I don't know if you heard, I mean, one of the things I've been saying for quite some time was fine dining is dead in India. Hmm. Because there was no audience for it for many years. But uh, it's now going to come back. And that's mm -hmm. lovely. And people want new scenes. Uh, they want to see more international products coming in. And my guess is we still be much beyond behind Malaysia. But we're getting there. Also, Leslie, what's interesting here is that I don't know the exact statistics, but my guess is people in Malaysia probably go out to eat three meals a week, four meals a week, five meals a week. In India, it was low, it was under two earlier. That number is also rising per person. So, mm -hmm. this is a huge growth. Just look at Asian metrics for growth, and uh, that really, you know, promises a very bright future for us, which can absorb all the new segments and more. Okay, okay, interesting, very interesting. Yeah, because, uh, uh, of course, you know, I'm, I've been here for the past 16 months and uh, I've been. Uh, around most of the places, high dining as well as you know the street food section, as the stiletto foodie, and uh, you know Malaysia has a thriving uh, you know food culture uh, because it's it's so multicultural, right? You know, with um, with the local Malay and the local Chinese and the local and local India, you know, Indians adding on to the entire food flavor. So it's a huge big uh, chunk, and I'm sure Leslie also will agree, uh, you know, with me as an observer, you know, for, that I see. Uh, it is huge, you know, everybody is uh, passionately, you know, devoted to food. There are all conversations about food, around food, for food. I am on so, so many social groups that the whole conversations are only about food AD. And sometimes I ask them, do you have a life beyond that? I say, what would that be? <laughs> if, not, <laughs> if not for what food, brings, right? What brings this country together is food, actually, you know? Yes. If you, um, um, it's, yeah, it, it's very different uh, to what, what what is in India actually. Uh, you, uh, here we call it the mamak shop actually, you know, yes. local yes. shop. You know, yes. when you go in there, you um, you ask them for a cup of okay. In India, it's a cup of tea. Here it's called te tare, You know, you know that's the, like a national drink for you actually in the morning. A big cup of tea, you know, with a with a froth on it. You know? So yes. I, I think food brings in people together, and I think that's the most loveliest thing to have. You know, when you have different cultures. You got the Chinese, the Indians, um, you got the Malays, the most important people who bring this country together, actually. So, yes. uh, uh, food is one thing which speaks for itself. You know, you, the local delicacies around. Uh, you can talk about the, the fine dines, you can talk about the, uh, the kitchen and bar concepts, 
but the street food especially. You know, mm -hmm. you walk into Jalanalo in Chankar Bukit Bintang. You the old stretch is with it's a massive street food. You can yes. name it to get it down there actually, and you can go into the best fine dance you want. Then you have then you have the uh, kitchen and bar concepts, the bar, the restaurants, the restaurant bar concepts, the gastro bar concepts actually. So everything is related. So if, um, you want to watch a football match, the best place is sit in a mamak shop and watch the game actually. You know, Correct. You, have, you have your roti chennai, you have when you name it, you get it. Yes. It's, it differentiates a lot of things together, and, and the country is the country is beautiful. You got beautiful people around you. It's just that it, it it needs to evolve itself around. You know, you got people pe people uh, people are very loving down here. The one one thing you know, you you humble and they humble back to you. you know, that's the most important thing in life. And uh, if I'm here, I'm being here I for the past 22 I years. Vouch. I yes. vouch for it. I absolutely vouch for it. Uh, you know, of all the places that I've traveled in the world, Malaysia feels completely like being, you know, like being home. It, it's a family. Like, yeah. It's home, home away from home because you have that culture here, actually. You know, Indians yeah. are here, the Chinese are here, the Malays are here. And I, I think they all blend together, you know. You, you a, a, a Bollywood movie, a Shah Rukh Khan's movie showed here. I think it's not the most yes. Indian crowd. It's more of the Malay crowd watching Shah Rukh Khan, actually. You know? So you know, I think uh, a lot of things, a lot of things uh, uh, has been accepted here. You know? The culture, the culture is very beautiful. I think, okay. and food is one thing that brings everyone together. So, and I think it's you can name it. You can get from Indian to whatever. Everything is down here. So. So when AD comes now to flies now to Kuala Lumpur, we will give him a very personal tour of sure. Bukit Bintang, yeah. Chankas, you know, all the fine dining restaurants. <laughs> Introduce him to the chefs. Everyone, let me say, very reasonable because for me, however beautiful the country is, the number one thing in my travel is to feel welcome and appreciated. Yes. And you know, I'm a bit of an old timer, and for much of my lifetime, as right. Indians, you've been really welcome in so many parts of the world, so many years. And it's lovely to hear that, uh, actually, Leslie. It makes me really. Want to come there for my next trip? Yeah. So yeah, so so moving forward, you know, there's so, so many uh, so much of inputs that uh, the, you know that uh, Leslie has shared with us, and uh, Ad has shared with us. Putting all that, you know, taking stock of all that and putting it into perspective, what what is the future of the FMB industry moving forward? Ad, let's hear it from you. As I was sort of saying during the show, I'm very bullish on it. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this pandemic was the worst time we've ever seen, and I'd say most industries around the world have ever seen. But it will pass. And uh, having survived this, I think, will only give us all much more confidence to handle other bumps coming up in the future. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there's so much growth coming up in the sector here. And uh, one thing, I don't know, let's see if that happened to you, but We've all started running much tighter ships after we were hit. Mm, so as yes. a result, our profit margins are better. We're working closer with our teams and our landlords and our vendors. Mm. That all helps us run more efficient organizations. So I'm actually quite bullish on the future for the industry here. And I just wait really to put this somewhat behind us so we can start getting there. Yes. Let's uh, leave Sorry, I just wanted to add to that. You were, um, it was very important to you to see what advice that and I can give to those who are struggling through this and for the future. Correct. So, as I said, for entrepreneurs, I really believe in it. And for those working in the industry, yes, it's, it's a horrible time. And many have been laid off or to have lived without pay for a long, long time. But I'd say hang in there. The industry is going to keep growing. And if you mm. build up your skills here, they will always be in demand. During this sort of slow times and off times, I really urge you to polish your skills as best as you can. Read the internet is fabulous. It helps you see trends of what's happening around the world. Don't yes. give up. Things will be back brighter in the future. Wow, that is yeah, that is a very positive note, Ad, because uh, you know I personally know that a lot of uh, you know professionals have. Uh, are, in India and in Malaysia, uh, kind of went to a really kind of you know low, you know, because they lost their jobs, they hung on to it, and then you know kind of really struggled. Leslie, uh, what 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 future do you see for the industry, and uh, you know, 
Or what what kind of suggestions can you also give us? I think a very similar perspective to what Mr. Adi spoke about it actually. Uh, it's not a dying industry. Yeah, it's uh, we have these kind of phases which you go through, but our, uh, this kind of a phase which is something which no one dreamt of. But you know, but um, the rebound is the rebound will happen. It will take some time, but mm. the rebound will happen. You know, I got many of them um, who have left because they feel that the, uh, the because of the FMB industry and industry which has been shut. The only industry that gets affected the most, actually, you know, and they don't want to come back to the FNB industry. I don't know if you've seen on BBC and um, you see in the US what's happening, you know. Yes, uh, people who have been working in the FMB industry, they don't want to return back because they're not confident of the job, actually, you know. Correct. I always believe that uh, this phase will go, you know, it's, it, 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 it's, it's around the corner, but we, I think we'll have to adapt to the new norm of it, actually. Uh, the industry will try. The industry, uh, uh, you're going to get a beating once in a way, I guess. But I think we are more or less here or there. Yeah. But but don't give up. You know, uh, nothing in life is easy. You know, it's 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 a struggle. It's a struggle for everyone. It's a struggle yes. for me. If I'm a owner, it's a struggle for me. If you're a worker, it's a struggle for you too. But then, end of the day, it's about understanding each other. Actually, you know, it's not about uh, I'm doing well and I don't take care of you. It has to be vice versa. You take care of me and I take care of you. There, there's very good days. And there's very bad, there's bad days also, but now I think mm. we have to understand that, and you need people who need to stand by you, yes. and you need to be confident yourself actually. And this industry is not a dying industry, uh, as you said. The numbers will grow, numbers right. will be back. You know, uh, I, I think it's just about to be confident and just be patient a little bit actually. You know, uh, yes. with uh, Malaysia, yeah, uh, the cake is very small. There's too many restaurants, and everyone shares that small yes. piece of cake. And if yes. you want to, to keep that small piece of cake, you know, you need to have that quality control done and kept in place. And, and the, I think, yeah, the, the people, I think the most important part is the, is the people who you work with or the people working for you. You know, they need to have your mindset. They need to understand where they're coming from and what mm. future lies for them, you know. Like many yes. of them you see, you know, uh, or um, they work for a couple of years or they work for a couple of months, they want to jump, mm. you know. Or just because someone gives you another extra hundred or two hundred, they yes. don't believe it's in life. It will be something called a long-term plan. It's never a short-term plan. You know, right. you don't want to resume to have uh, in in five years twenty places. You know, you want to have that five years one place and a growth in that resume from mm. a waiter or supervisor to a manager or to a level. You know, that yes. that I think that they need to build that confidence in them and tell them if this is and you know service industry is something which you need to love what you're doing. If you yeah. don't like it, you can't do it. You know, yeah. you need that. You need that yeah. positive energy because you face people with different moods. You know, you need to adapt to it. The best customer can have a, a, a bad mood at a long time, actually, and you can have that, and you can be there at the wrong time, actually. But I always believe hard work. If you're really in for it, hard work, it pays off. It pays off on a later part of life. But no, you don't get all this uh, jumping onto you and telling you, "Oh, they're doing good today and everything is fine." I think. People need yeah. to be, be patient, understand what they are doing, and uh, this industry is something. There's a lot of growth. Today you are something, and tomorrow you can be a home owner for yourself. I've been through it actually. I think I, I came from, I did from school of management, from a waiter to a supervisor, mm -hmm. manager. Yeah, I'm owner, uh, owner later. You no, know? but Correct. you also need to work hard for it. It's just not about telling yourself, "I have the money, I open a business." If you do mm -hmm. not know economics of business, you don't open it. You know. This is one yeah. industry. I always tell my guys, a bartender can make you and he can break you. Every yeah. prop is money, actually, you know. So it's very yeah. small, small things we need to understand. People say, oh, we have the money, you want to do it. But they do not know. They, you need to have the right people to run for you, actually, you know. And right. that's, the, that's the most important thing. And uh, the backbone of an organization is the people who you work with. You, know? right. you have the trust. The trust level is the most important thing in life, actually, you know. I, I can be sitting at home. I got people running for you, running it down. But they need to understand if I'm true to my to my owner, I think he, he takes care of me. You know, all these small small things. I think it has to be built mentally into them. It needs to be. It's like you sow seeds every day into their head. Actually, you know, you need to keep on repeating yourself. Uh, it doesn't. It's uh, for everyone. Today is today, and tomorrow is tomorrow. What happened today is today. That, that's about it. Actually, you know. This, yeah, that's small, small things which can make an organization blossom. I fully agree. I fully agree with you, Leslie. And uh, I must tell AD too, 
I've had beautiful experiences, you know, at AD's properties in, uh, you know, in Bombay, and of course, you know, Leslie at your properties too. Because uh, I think I think the people uh, uh, that you employ, who work with you, are, are a reflection of, you know, who they work with or for, and uh, and all all you know, all of us talk about, you know, huge management values and all that, all words. But if you don't see that in action and an actual behavior, you know, you know what I'm saying, AD. You know, it, it, it's a direct relationship, you know, or, or representation of the brand, you know, uh, person to person. The boss might not be, you know, uh, in the kitchen or, you know, or in the office, but the, but the personnel, you know, are the direct reflection of what the brand all stands about. So I, I love the fact that you, what you're saying is that the industry is not going anywhere. The industry is going to be growing and that what we have to do is, you know, build resilience, you know, and kind of, you know, stay on there, hold on there. And uh, that is the uh, that is the future, right? As in, like all the SOPs now become part of our lives. Uh, social distancing in restaurants to become part of you know part of the scenario. There's no escape. And um, okay, and that uh, people who wish to build uh, you know a livelihood around FMB uh, should upgrade their skills, which is I think very important, right? Uh, and this this time allows them that uh, you know that window to kind of uh, do that. I have, I have a, a very interesting question actually addressed to uh, both of you. Uh, this is from Faisal uh, in uh, from Bangladesh. Uh, Faisal says, uh, Bangladesh is a country of emerging economies. What direction would you like to give to our young people working in the FMB industry? I love this question. Faisal, thank you. Thank you for asking this. Uh, Adi, would you have a take on that? Yes, interesting. Mm -hmm. as, we like, as we grow, Creative person, I think I'm doing new things. I love to enjoy. But the um, macro trends, um, we all are, go through the same sort of cycles. And so I would say for Bangladesh and for youngsters starting off, have a look, say, for example, at India, Malaysia, what's working for people, what kind of jobs, what kind of products are coming up there. And that's a good way to form a, a vision of how the industry and the market will go in Bangladesh as well. And that can help youngsters plan their career. OK, all right. Thank you, AD. Leslie, uh, uh, your take on this? Yeah, uh, I think I have a lot of Bangladeshis working for me, actually, you know, um, yes. uh, in one of, most of my outlets. You know? I've seen them. Uh, they work very hard. They have that uh, level of they want to um, adapt to and they want to grow. You know. Uh, but as I said earlier, so if if you are from from this industry and you want to come into this industry, or if you're not in this industry, you want to come into this industry, you need to learn the basics. Start start yes. start from the scratch. Um, you uh, that which teaches you every single thing. You know, if uh, if you do not want to, uh, if you don't have the money for it, actually, you can always learn. You don't have to go to colleges to learn nowadays. I think the best uh, way of learning is. Uh, it's no more theory, you know. It's mm -hmm. everything practical. Uh, the most important thing. You start from which you want to be uh, on the service line, or you want to be uh, start from the kitchen. Uh, all these basic things you can you can adapt to it. Actually, you learn, and that's the way you grow. You know, do what you love. That's the most important thing, and love what you do later. Actually, you know, that gives you a very very uh, good feeling end of the day. You know, when you finish your job and you say, I I did it from my heart. You know, so Correct. yeah, that's a very simple thing. Correct. Adi, do you see uh, uh, any restaurant, uh, you know, any restaurant brand of yours coming to Malaysia? Interesting, you would be great to join in Sin You could always, yeah. Yeah, because, I thought know, I would chat to him at another time and see, because um, I would imagine if he saw the bar look Nawala, maybe all of itself, maybe yes. there would be an opportunity there. The great thing is both listening, you know that market, no no our products. So it'll be worth taking your advice on that. Yeah, awesome, Leslie. See, I, I, you know, when 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 both of you, uh, you know, kind of you know said yes to it, uh, to the heart to heart to heart, and then I realized that we, that you had the olive tree, you know, uh, as as a commonality. I was like, wow, you know, this is this is not just coincidence, right? <laughs> there, there's a reason for it, yeah, and uh, I'm so glad that you know both of well, you, made, you always yeah, made, yeah. yeah made the time for it you know to kind of share inputs and uh, you know such valuable inputs because uh, it matters to the industry 
I think knowledge sharing is very important today because you know life has changed. Uh, you know, and COVID has shaken up you know every structure that we knew where people worked in their own little kind of you know environments and groups. It no longer you know uh, it, it has broken all those barriers because you, we are all. Over years, I've been on so many panels where I've talked to new entrepreneurs into the restaurant business, and I try to dim caution into them because. All right, that's is very exciting with the bright future. So right. Getting into it, you need to be very, very careful. It's one of the surest ways to lose money. And so I give them my, my advice, take a franchise and work with an established company and then grow step by step. But looking out over the sea of cases, I've always realized no business thing. Because they're yes. so excited about yes. getting into it and they think it's easy and lucrative. So maybe, you know, I mean, frankly, from my side, Post pandemic, I would stress on it even more. Be a little careful when you get into it. Mm -hmm. Can be a great career, and as Jesse said, only do it though if you love it, and you know, then every day is a joy. But be careful when you get into it. Correct, yeah. So, so Leslie, how do you see uh, October, November, December, which is like the festive months in Malaysia as well as in India? How, how do you see that panning out, you know, with, uh, with the phase one and whatever uh, announced here? I think it's good actually. Uh, it's given us a little uh, breather now. That, uh, we are getting into that new norm of um, the dining happening. And I think October now, in December, I think business will grow. You know, it's, it's anyway the festival season. People will start to spend. People mm -hmm. will come out. You know? People will get, uh, I think, the herd immunity. I think uh, they're given a period of October 7th, uh, is 85% of the herd immunity in Malaysia to be fully vaccinated. So okay. uh, that's not going to stop anyone uh, now. I think. People will say, I had my double vaccination, what's next, you know? I yes. think the, the shots is coming out. I think it's all planned. Uh, I think people will start to come out. I think uh, most of the uh, organizations are starting to open. The work mm -hmm. from home uh, platform, which we never thought about, is is given a new dimension uh, into this industry, actually, you know, to, into the whole community, I guess. Uh, you yes. work from home and, and still work goes on as usual. But I think um, that that will fade off a little bit. Uh, I think uh, at least seventy percent or sixty seventy percent of them will start come coming back to the offices. So that will give you a little more uh, breather. People will start to come out and spend. Like uh, yeah, seven days a week you eat outside. You know, uh, mm -hmm. at point, buy and cook. Uh, so yes. seven days so people eat out and uh, people uh, buy back and go back. You know? So I think uh, it will change. We we'll, we will see the numbers coming in. I think I'm very positive uh, for October and November. Uh, we just need to be uh, keep our fingers crossed that nothing, uh, not, 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 not another wave happening down here, actually. Uh, no, yes. because the numbers are still high. It's not right. it's, uh, it's not come to three digits. It's still uh, on five digits, actually. So mm -hmm. I, I'm positive. I'm positive things will change here, actually. Yeah. Adi, how do you see your, your, you know, the October, November, December panning out in India for the for the uh, industry? My feeling is that India will have a third wave. Uh, around October, because okay. um, Kochi sees much of the world, the US, etc., and our vaccination numbers are growing. The government's trying its best. We are a very big country, so there's a lot of yes. Um, yes. Uh, and of course, it's a bit worrying now to read about new variants that the vaccinations don't protect you against. Yeah. So my assessment is we will have probably another hit. It won't be as bad as the second wave. It will yes. probably be locked down for about a month and around October, which still gives us five months to get back on our feet. And if that's all that happens this year, the industry will take it and try and try and keep going. Do, do we see 2022 giving us some relief? Because I think all of us have had enough of 2020 and 2021 already. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. We thought about that. No? We always said that 2020, okay, it's done, dusted, and finished. You know? Yes. 2020, yes. Was just, uh, it was just like a opening, and 2021 is a real picture now happening. You know, I, yeah. I'm, I'm, waiting, I'm waiting for the climax now. <laughs> <laughs> you know? uh, so I know I, I'm uh, fingers crossed. I'm trying to just tell myself that you know we just tell ourselves stay positive and we move on from here, and it's no more again another closure. I think another mm -hmm. closure is going to it's going to hurt badly. You know, yeah, we I yeah. think uh, from we have used all of our sources of income reserves and basically whatever you talk about. You know, it's not going to be easy for another closure. I, I don't think the governments 
the governments are ready for it also. Even the government here, we are ready for another closure. I think okay. uh, they, I think you need the right people to handle it, the right people who understands it, and uh, the right people who talk about it in the right way, actually. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you, you can't be pressing down uh, and telling yourself uh, everything everything negative. You need that little positive mindset and tell yourself that, yeah, this is it. People need to understand what is it all about, you know. You, yeah. Today, if you talk about this, if you look at uh, 2002, uh, 2002, when SARS happened, you know, mm. it happened and it finished in six to eight months or one year span. The, there was no social media. Uh, today, everything's in social media. You know? right, and right. that's the whole thing which blows out everything out of proportion. You know, Correct. it can be real news, it can be fake news. Yes. People buy yes. into it, you know, people try to understand everything. They want to know. So I think uh, uh, you need to have the, those kind of things controlled a little bit. Um, the anti-vaxxers basically also need to understand the people who are vaccinated uh, for them also to be safe. I think certain mm -hmm. things, we, we have to work responsibility. We have to be a responsible citizen, wherever you live in, you know? Mm -hmm. So yes. I think uh, let's let's yeah. leave it as it is. Do not want to speak about the, uh, the negative Correct. impact it's created actually. Yeah. Adi, what what do you think about 2022? Is is it is it the, is it going to be the uh, the pot of gold at the end of the uh, I would not call it rainbow, but end of the tunnel? <laughs> I think as you said, we all thought 2020. Now the years over here, 21 was pretty again. So I would just right. be happy with a better 2022, even if it's not fully back to normal. We take it. Yes. Wow. So interesting. So interesting, you know, great inputs from, from both of you, uh, you know, great inputs for me as well, because I, you know, I, I love listening to, you know, uh, what different sections of the industry have to share on platforms like this, because then uh, what we do is, you know, the video gets shared everywhere and people then in replay also watch it and, you know, and come back to me. I have great feedback that happens, you know, people write uh, short kind of emails and DMs that happen. So, so you engage. And I think everyone is looking for some sort of engagement today because uh, technology also allows that. You know, and, uh, managers. It's, it's brought, like how you say about working with your teams now, you become much more closer, right? Because, you know, because, uh, you know, circumstances have has forced us to uh, reevaluate, right? Reevaluate and look at um, how even our interpersonal relationships, you know, are, are all about. So the FMB industry is like one big, huge global family in that sense, too. Everybody is connected, and everybody, you know, has the same issues uh, that they deal with, and has the same highs and the same lows. So, Ad, thank you so much for making the time today. I know that you have another, you know, another function now to attend, but uh, I, I really love the fact that you made the time. You know, I, I just managed to kind of, you know, grab hold of you and say, "Okay, Ad, I need you on this show," and you know, and uh, we need to discuss this, and you said okay to it. Thank you, Ad. Thank you. I hope uh, that we meet sometime, because as I said, we're always being in the same social circles, but never physically met. But today we have. When I get back to India, we have to, we have to, you know, uh, look each other up. Or when you, or when you come this side. Or when you come this side. Yeah, when you come this side. Me and Leslie will take you around. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you, AD, for joining us. Have a wonderful day, your rest of your Sunday. Have a wonderful life. Hang in there. Uh, you know, good times, bad times. It'll all just pass. You know, we hope it'll all pass. Thank you. Thank you so much for making the time. Uh, you know, to Thank be, you to uh, all of you. I hope it will be heart to heart. Yes. We'll That's the end. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Edie. And thank you, Leslie, so much. Uh, you, you made the time, you know, as well. Uh, because I know that you also have such a busy schedule. We've been trying to put this together for quite some time. But here we are, correct? I've not met you personally too, despite yes. being in Malaysia. But, you know, it opens the doors now to you know, many collaborations, uh, you know, that we can do. I'm here to also kind of you know, support the industry in whichever way that I can. Uh, and uh, as I said, I've had great experiences at Fungipani and your other place at in, in Bangsar, I think Rock Bottom, right? Yeah. Or Rock, yeah, Rock Bottom, yes. Yeah, Rock Bottom. Uh, great staff, uh, you know, they, they always looked after me when I get there. And uh, you're also in my book, The Seleto Foodie. If you haven't bought it, please buy it. <laughs> sure. Okay. Yes, uh, you know, and I said, I'm here to support, you know, the industry myself. Uh, you know, thank you so much. So thank you for making the time.
I wish you great success. I wish you resilience. Uh, you know, uh, sabar. Sabar in in Malaysia, AD is patience. I learned that. You know, sabar. Yeah, you know, sabar. Yeah, you know. And uh, I will hope to see you soon. Sure. Uh, hang in there. Hang in there. Hang in there. A lot of a lot of free professionals in in Malaysia, the F&B industry are actually hanging in there. I know that for sure. You know, uh, for sure. So hang in there. Keep the flags uh, flying and the olive tree alive in both parts of the continent. Right. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you so much, okay. Leslie. Thank you so much, Thank you. 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 Yes. I've had such a great time, you know, uh, hosting Heart to Hearts uh, uh, special edition today on the FMB industry. Watch it in replay. The, you know, the video will be available. Please share it with uh, with your friends so they can also kind of you know get some sort of information and knowledge uh, of both these you know uh, personalities from India and Malaysia who have been uh, in the FMB industry for such a long time. Thank you so much for joining me on this edition of uh, Heart to Heart. Um, be strong yourself, be, uh, be brave. We have to ride this pandemic one way or the other. Um, thank you to the Mac Clinic for being part of uh, the Heart to Heart Leadership Soul Series. Be strong and have a great, um, great evening. Thank you.